Hi there, welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra. Here are my top five fall DIYs based on my viewers. Thanks so much for your support. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to hit that red subscribe button, like those videos with a thumbs up, and click the bell. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Project number one is using this Farm Fresh pumpkin sign from the Dollar Tree, plus one of their shopping bags in the black buffalo plaid. I've cut open the bag so I can use the inside white to trace my pumpkin, but I'm not going to trace it exactly as it is. I'm going to leave about a good inch of space all the way around. Then I'll just cut it out using regular scissors. Starting at the bottom, I'm going to use hot glue to attach the two together. I'm going to flip the pumpkin around and then start gluing the rest of it from the top down. The reason I'm doing this is because I do have some extra material from the shopping bag and I'm going to need to use two hands to just get that line matched up with the outside of the pumpkin. It's going to leave the shopping bag a little bubbly on the top, but you'll see what I'm getting to in a little bit. Now I'm taking a large plastic grocery bag. If you don't have a large one, you can use a couple of small ones, however big you want this pumpkin to be. And I'm just putting it into the shape of the pumpkin and pushing it down towards the bottom really gently. I don't wanna to push too hard to get that hot glue popped off. Now I'll tack it down with some hot glue on the very top. And then you can see that I'm getting a little bit of a puffy look on my pumpkin. Starting from the top now, I'm going to just match up the edges of the shopping bag with the edge of this pumpkin. And I'll just have to kind of play with it, move it around a little bit until I get it in the right spot. I'm going to put hot glue on the rest of the side of the pumpkin and then push the bag down in the center first and then spread it out to the sides. So I've got some extra folds here because of how things happened and that's okay. I was expecting this to happen. So I'm just going to take these little pleats and glue them down towards the inside. So towards the center of the side and then I'll repeat this whole process on the other side of the pumpkin. There was a little excess on the back so I just took my scissors and trimmed it off. I love the way this pumpkin is looking. He is so cute and puffy, but he's a really shiny. So I'm taking some Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white, and I'm just going to do a little dry brushing just to dull down that shine and give him a more rustic and weathered look. He's looking super cute right now, but I do need to trim him up a little bit more. I'm taking some of this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm starting at the top and I'm just going to go all around the exterior edge of the pumpkin and frame it in. Using the same rope, I'm going to wrap the stem. Starting at the back, I'm going to hot glue it down and then I'll hot glue it a couple of times throughout the front and the back just to make sure it's nice and secure. I'd like to take a moment and share with you if you haven't seen it already that this past weekend I woke up to 8,000 subscribers. I am so excited and so very honored and grateful 
that all of you feel that I am worthy for your subscription. So again, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support and all that you are doing for my channel. Although this cutie is really looking like a pumpkin, I wanted to add some extra rope into the center to give him those ribs and make him even more dimensional. So I'm just going to glue some pieces along the side and then a couple of pieces in the center. Next, I'm going to take just a piece of floral wire that you can see there, and this is some ribbon that I picked up at Walmart. It's that cute little gingham or buffalo plaid. I'm going to take that ribbon and wrap it around that floral wire so it has the same look as the pumpkin. I'll use some hot glue just to start, and then I'm just going to wind it all the way down to the bottom and then hot glue it at the end as well. I'm going to twist and bend this wire to make it look like one of those curly cues that you see on the top of the pumpkins. Those are just left over from the vines. And I just thought that would be so cute to have a little buffalo plaid curly cue sticking out from behind the pumpkin. So once I've got this all twisted, I'm going to hot glue it down on the back. And to add a, even a little bit more texture, I'm taking a piece of nautical rope and I'm going to hot glue that to the back as well, right underneath the little wire. And then I'm going to open up that nautical rope and fray it so it has a little bit more dimension and it's not just one piece of rope hanging there. My next project is using this little square frame from the Dollar Tree. I'm sure you've seen this guy around. I've had him for a couple of months now, I think. But I'm going to just pop out that little fox because I don't need him, even though he's the perfect color for fall. I used a box cutter just to get rid of any extra cardboard. Using Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint, I'm going to give this two coats. I'm going to go all the way on the inside and then I'm going to do the edges and the outside as well. While I'm waiting for the house to dry, I'm just taking some of while I'm waiting for the house to dry, I thought I would paint up a couple of these acorns that also come from the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of 12 and this is folk art Maui sand chalk paint it's just a dark gray I didn't like the color of those acorns this year to me it was too dark and too burgundy so I'm not into those colors so I just thought I would freshen these up a bit I'm taking another piece of that shopping bag in the buffalo plaid and I want to put that on the inside of this house so I'm tracing it on the outside but I'll have to cut in probably a good quarter of an inch smaller to make sure that it fits properly I did have to do some additional trimming after this to make sure that it fit nice and flat on the bottom of the house. Then I went ahead and hot glued the piece right into place. Safety tip, make sure you've got some protection on your fingers when you're using plastic and hot glue. I didn't burn myself, but it was fairly warm when I was pressing down. I should have been using my little Dollar Tree fingertip protectors. So again, even though I really love this buffalo plaid, it was a little bright. So I did take some of the white chalk paint and I dry brushed on top of the plaid. Now I'm taking some of the dark gray and just doing some distressing around the outside edge of the box. I'll also do some dry brushing along the white of the sides and along the inside. This is a little orange pumpkin that I got in a pack of 12 from Amazon and I'm taking my 
utility knife and I'm cutting it in half. It's styrofoam, so it's really easy to cut. The blade isn't long enough, so I do have to just kind of break it apart and then I'll just clean it up to make it a nice flat edge. When I cut him in half, he lost his little pumpkin stem, so I'm just hot gluing that back into place. I also decided to give him a little bit of dry brushing with the gray. For some reason this year, I'm not into all the bright oranges. I like more of the muted colors. It might just be a mood that I'm in, I'm not sure, but I love the orange as a little pop of color here and there, but I like it dulled down just a little bit more. I also decided to dry brush a little bit of white on top of the acorns. After playing around with a couple of different ways to insert my pumpkin into this little house, I decided that right smack in the middle was the best place for him. So using some hot glue, I just glued him in place. Here they are grouped together. I think they are super cute. I hope you I've decided to flip this spool. It held some electrical wire and the wire was done. So I grabbed it. This was a hanging around at my cottage and so it was absolutely free. So who doesn't like free? I'm also going to be using some Dollar Tree supplies. I'm going to use three of their cookie sheets. I thought I might use these styrofoam circles but I didn't end up using them in the end. You're also going to need something that has a fairly wide surface. I'm using the bottom end of this Dollar Tree craft scraper and you can see what I'm doing is just rubbing it along the cookie sheet to get rid of all those little bumps. This is a tip that I picked up from another YouTuber and I'll have her channel linked in my description box as well. You're going to do this to the whole thing and you can see how nice and smooth it gets. You can also use the end of the scissors. You can use a scraper if you have something like a plastic scraper that would probably work too. A spatula, a spoon, anything that will give you that smooth surface. Next, I'm just going to be folding in about a quarter of an inch on each side. When you cut these Dollar Tree cookie sheets, they leave sharp edges. So I don't want anybody to cut themselves, especially me. So I'm going to go ahead and fold those sharp edges over and just crease them nicely all the way down. Now that I've got a couple of pieces prepared, I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take each of these bands or strips and I'm going to hot glue them one on the top and one on the bottom. This is going to create the round sections for my pumpkin. So this will be a faux galvanized pumpkin and using hot glue. Remember when you're using hot glue on metal, it gets super hot. These cookie sheets warm up really, really quickly as well. So what you're going to do is use something else. I'm just using the end of this scraper because it is silicone and that's just going to help me protect my fingers. I'll do the same thing on the bottom and then when I take the second piece I'm going to overlap them just a little bit. Because it's in a circle I'm not going to be able to do them 100% straight so I do want them to overlap so they get this type of shape. It's going to be so cute when it's finished. Here's how I cut out the cookie sheet. I take off the outside edge, which is the part that's curled up, and you should be able to get four strips out of each of these cookie sheets. I cut them in half first, and then I cut the smaller sections in half again. Then I go ahead and do my smoothing out with my little scraper and folding over the edges to get rid of those sharp edges. 
I've just got one more piece to glue on. Take a look at this. It is absolutely so adorable. I was so pleased with how it was turning out. So excited that my vision was actually working out. Sometimes as crafters, these things don't always work out. So it's actually really exciting when they do. Now this wouldn't be a pumpkin without a stem. This is where this extra edge where we cut out and didn't need for the strips is going to come in handy. What I'm doing is just making it flat, kind of squishing it so it's nice and flat. And then I'm starting at one end and rolling it up. And as I roll it, I'm putting it in on an angle. So it's going to roll in on itself. And you can see that that is creating a little bit of a tall roll. It's going to start smaller and get larger as I get towards the bottom. And I'm not going to use all of it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it for as much as I feel it needs to be for the size of a pumpkin stem. Once I get the length I want, I'm going to cut off the end and then hot glue the edges together so they don't come apart. Since metal bonds really well to metal with hot glue, I'm just going to put a bead of glue around the circle and just place the foil stem on top. Using another piece of the edge, I'm just gonna press it flat and then cut a couple of pieces that I'm going to be able to use as the little twirly vine pieces at the top of the pumpkin stem. I'm just going to use my screwdriver and wind it around the handle to make a nice big fat curly cue for my pumpkin stem. The original spool had some rusty black kind of markings on it. They were kind of dots or it looked like someone had spray painted it. It's just how it oxidized, I guess. So what I'm doing is just taking some hammered metal finish paint in black and I'm just spraying a little bit on there to get the same type of look that the spool got. So just some little spritzes, not too much color on this, but I just want to kind of dull it down a wee bit. Once the spray paint was dry, I took my honey brown acrylic paint and a really stiff brush and I'm going to just flick some of this paint onto the pumpkin. I want this to look like kind of rusty spots or I liked how it looked with the black but I wanted it to have a little bit more of some fall pumpkin color to it as well. Here's how the pumpkin looks now that it's all finished. Let me know what you think. I'd like to I went over to Dollar Tree and found some really neat glass items. This one looks like a gourd and I found some other ones that look like pumpkins. I'm going to give all of them a couple of coats of white latex paint in an eggshell finish. This one has some really neat grooves in it that I thought looked like little ribs of the pumpkin, so I'm going to do this one as well. I also wanted to find something that would make a really cute tall gourd so I found this plastic water bottle and I'm going to do the same thing a couple of coats of white eggshell paint. Next I'm going to take some grey chalk paint and a small artist brush and draw some lines where you would naturally see the grooves of the pumpkin. 
So for this first jar, I'm going to do it in between all of these bump outs and just do a really dry brushed light line all the way around. This is another glass jar that I found. It also has a lid. You can see that off to the left there. I'm going to do the same thing. Just draw some gray lines all the way around and give it the look of a pumpkin. I've put the lid on the jar and I'm just going to continue matching the lines with the gray paint. I'm really liking how these are turning out, but I wanted to add a little bit more of a pumpkin or fall look to them. So I took some red and yellow acrylic paint, blended it together until I got the color I wanted. And now I'm going to dry brush onto all of these jars, giving this a little bit more texture and an aged distressed look. I just love dry brushing because it always brings out the features of your project, the lines, the bumps, anything like that gives it more character and more of a distressed and aged look. I'm going to repeat these dry brushing steps with the gourds and I'm also going to add a little bit of gray just to give it some more dimension. The other thing I like about dry brushing is when you put your original coats on with a rough brush, you get some brush strokes and that really helps to give some lines and some distressing, especially to a smooth piece like this bottle. It doesn't have a lot of texture to it, so the original paint is giving it the texture that it needs. When I was thrifting a while back, I found these zinc crown mason jar lids and they fit perfectly right on top of this little candle holder from the Dollar Tree. And I just thought that would be the perfect addition to top off those little ones. Then I'm also going to use some twine and jute rope to cover up the knobs on these two to make them look like pumpkin stems. Once I got almost around to the top, I took some jute rope, split the strands in half, actually in thirds because that's how they're wrapped, and I'm going to use this to finish off the stem of this little pumpkin. When I'm wrapping twine around things, I always use my hot glue to secure it in a few different spots as I'm wrapping it around just so it stays in place. I'm going to leave a few of these strands hanging out so it looks like some of the vines that you see on pumpkin stems. I also added some short pieces of the thick jute rope to act as the stem. For this one, to make it look like a gourd, I needed to add more of a top to it. So I'm using the thick jute rope and I'm going to glue it all the way around, but I'm going to narrow it each time I wrap it around in the circle so it has more of a rounded cone shape. And then I'll add another short jute piece of rope to act as the stem. I'm also going to repeat the same process for the large water bottle that I turned into a gourd. I'd like to thank a moment and thank all of my subscribers and viewers for supporting my channel. I've grown really fast in the last month or so and I owe it all to you. Thank you so much for your support. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and click that red subscribe button. Stick around a while and see what I'm up to. My next project is this Dollar Tree acorn chipboard piece and some burlap. I'm going to start by putting some burlap for the top of the acorn and I'll just glue it across from one edge to the other. I'll then wrap it around the back and secure it in place with hot glue.
I want the top of the acorn to have some extra texture so I'm going to be doing some folding of the burlap. So you can see that I've just folded it there and I'm going to crease it just a little bit with my fingers and then I'm just going to put some hot glue and place it down where I want that fold to start. So it's actually pretty simple to do. Just make sure you don't burn your hands. I did do that a couple of times, even though I do have those silicone finger tops from the Dollar Tree. I just always forget to put them on. I'll keep folding this over until I run out of burlap and then I'll be adding another piece on the top just to finish it off. I've got my burlap section all completed and now I'm going to add some small twine to the top of the stem just to give it a little bit of a different texture. I'll start by gluing it at the back and then just wrapping it around and gluing it as I go just to keep it in place. For the bottom portion of the acorn, I found this beautiful fuzzy yarn with all these gorgeous fall colors at the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to start by hot gluing the first section at the back and I'm just going to go to town wrapping it all the way around, gluing it occasionally as I come around the backside all the way down to the bottom of the acorn. It turns out so cute. I just love this idea. Look at how cute this acorn turned out. I just am so in love with it. For the last little final touch, I'm taking a little piece of burlap oak leaf and gluing it onto the top. I hope you enjoy. My first project for you today is using these Dollar Tree Farm Fresh pumpkin signs. Now these were the design from last year, but I believe the pumpkin shape is still available this year. It just has a new design on the front of it. I'm going to just disassemble it by taking the leaf off and that jute string because I'm not going to need that. I've got six of these. I only ended up using five, but I just wanted to make sure that I had enough. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is scoring with my box cutter and my ruler, and I'm gonna be removing that stem because I don't need that. This is a, like a multi-density fiber board, almost just like a really thick cardboard. And when you score it with your box cutter, you can just snap off the piece very easily. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with my box cutter, but I'm going to score it in half. So I wanna have each of these pumpkins cut in half. I'm going to find the middle, then cut my first piece, and then use one of the halves as a template to cut the rest of the pieces. Once you're done watching my video, I would love for you to go over to Carol's channel, watch her video, and then click down in our description boxes and you will find a playlist link. You are sure to be inspired by all of the wonderful ladies participating in our Fall Farmhouse DIY Challenge. Once you've got it cut in half, you can just easily clean up any of the pieces that are still there just using the knife again. I'm now going to use some of this crack shot spackle and just fill in those holes that were used to hang these signs. They could probably be filled in with paint, but I just wanted to make sure that they were nice and solidly filled before I started to paint. I don't know about you guys, but I hate feeling paint or 
spackle or anything on my fingers. So I just go ahead and use a small little piece of wood when I'm working with the spackle. It just helps because then your finger doesn't get all dry and cakey and it's just horrible to try and get that stuff off. So it's probably just a me thing, but I just thought I would share how I do it. Once the spackles dry, I'm just taking a really fine 220 grit sandpaper and just sanding it nice and smooth. This is a tube from a roll of gift wrap. I've cut it in half and now I'm using Rust-Oleum chalked paint in the color chiffon cream and I'm going to give this a couple of coats but just three quarters of the way. I'm going to leave that top section brown for now. I'm also going to give all of these pumpkin halves a couple coats of the chiffon cream. On this front side where that black label is, I needed to do two coats. For the brown on the back, one coat was sufficient. I'm not going to be painting any of the sides, like the edges, because I'm going to be doing something different with those in a little bit. Now I'm going to distress with a color that's very similar to the Waverly Mineral Chalk Paint. This one is called Mushroom and it's just a latex paint that I had left over from painting my walls. So I love the color and I use it quite a bit. I'm just going to do a dry brush technique because I just want to accentuate some of the brush strokes that were made when I painted it with the chiffon cream. This is just going to be a way to distress it and just make it look a little bit more rustic. For the top portion of this gift wrap roll, I'm just doing a little bit of dry brushing as well. I had painted it just with a dark brown acrylic paint. Here comes the fun part, assembling this pumpkin. So if you haven't figured it out already, I'm going to be using some hot glue and gluing each of these sections of pumpkin onto this gift wrap roll. Now the first thing you've got to remember is that there needs to be a lot of hot glue. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. So you should probably be putting a bead at least a quarter inch wide. This was something that I figured out as I was going along. That's how crafters work. We figure things out as we go along. You can see here that I just did not have enough glue on this first piece. So it gave me a little bit of trouble, but then I did end up figuring it out. Another thing that I figured out is that you don't want to have the bottom portion of the pumpkin sticking out farther than the bottom part of the craft tube because that will give your pumpkin a wonky look to it. It won't sit straight. I did have to do a little bit of trimming with my craft knife at the very bottom in some of the pieces. And as you can see, I'm still struggling with this first one. So again, grabbing some more hot glue and making it work. Once I got the first two attached, finally, I went on to add two more to make a total of four. That would be sort of an X pattern. And then I went ahead and added more and more. You can see here that I also have put on my little Dollar Tree silicone fingertip protector because I was taking my finger and running down the side of where the hot glue was sticking out. As I said, I used a lot of hot glue, so I did want to take off a little bit of the excess. I'm now going to use a makeup sponge and some acrylic paint in the color Honey Brown. It's a really kind of a muted brownish orange color. It's really nice and I love it for farmhouse decor because it's really not too bright of an orange. And I'm just gonna dab my makeup sponge all the way around on all of these edges. And if a little bit of paint gets on the chiffon cream, that's okay. It's gonna just give it some little bit of added character and make it look a little bit more like a pumpkin. So as you can tell from this, the brown is meant to be the stem of the pumpkin, but I didn't want it 
straight up like that. It just didn't look natural. So I'm taking my box cutter and making four slits about a half an inch down. And then I'm just going to bend those cardboard pieces in on themselves just to give it more of a stem look, a little bit more natural looking, I guess. I also cut a bit of a slit about halfway down because I wanted to give the stem a little bit of a crook. So taking out a little piece of the cardboard allowed me to just bend it without breaking anything. I decided to take some hot glue and glue down the stem pieces just so they would be in the shape that I wanted. I didn't like them kind of just all ragged like that. So I'm just going to bend them over and glue them in place. No farmhouse project would be complete without some type of twine or jute rope or burlap. So I've got this wired cord from the Dollar Tree. It's jute rope or twine, but it's got a wire inside of it. So I'm just going to be twirling it around my pencil so I can get the curly cues of the pumpkin. And then I'm going to wrap the center portion around the bottom of the stem. I'm going to go around three or four times and I'll secure it with hot glue so it doesn't pop off. I'm going to use one of these burlap oak leaves from the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of five and I'll just hot glue that right onto the stem. I am so happy with how this turned out. Check out this adorable pumpkin. I'd like to thank My first project for you today is using two of these terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree and Rust-Oleum chalked chiffon cream. I'm going to give both of these pots two coats. Now that they're fully dry, I'm going to dry brush with some country gray Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I'm just going to use a little bit. I want to have a bit of distressing. I don't want it to be too heavy. So I'm just going to make sure that I dab off as much paint as I can just to get a light touch. I'm going to do some dry brushing on this golden pear and I'm using the chiffon cream paint to do that with this. Again, I just want a really light touch. I'm going to do the same thing with these two little green apples. These were an Amazon purchase and I'll have that link down in the description box. The pears I picked up at Pier 1 on clearance last year. I've now got to fill up my little pots with something so I can have the fruit sitting on top. I've got this leftover styrofoam. I always keep all the styrofoam from different packaging and different things when I get things in the mail. I think this came from a large TV and I'm just going to be able to wedge that right inside the little pot. I'm going to use some bits of this green moss and I'm going to hot glue that inside the pots. Then I'll use some hot glue to glue down the fruit. I'm going to do the apples a little bit different. I want them to be a little bit off kilter. So I'm going to glue this one down onto the moss, but the second one is going to need a stick or some kind of wire to make it a little bit more elevated. So I've just gone into my stash and found another piece of floral wire that I'm going to poke through the bottom of the apple and then just stick it into the foam. My second project is using this pack of 12 acorns from the Dollar Tree. I am really into acorns this year and I see a lot of them around so I know that's a bit of a trend right now so I thought I would just stick with that trend. I don't like the color of these so I'm going to take the chiffon cream and give them a couple of coats. 
when you're done watching my video, I would really appreciate it if you would click that link down in my description box, head over to Liana's channel and see what she did for our collab today. I'm going to make a beaded garland with the acorns and some beads. I've got a large darning needle and this yarn that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. In a previous project, I used it to cover a whole acorn, a really large one. So I'll link that down in the description box if you wanna go see how I made that one. I'm just gonna go ahead and feed the yarn through the bead, tie a knot at the other end, and then I'm going to start alternating with beads and acorns. Since the acorns are just made out of styrofoam, I'm very easily able to just poke that darning needle right through the top and feed it all the way through and that is going to attach the acorn to the yarn. The beads I'm using came in a big bucket from my Dollarama. They were $3.50 for, I think there's a couple hundred beads in there, but they're all different styles. So I'm just going to take the dark beads and the lighter colored wooden beads and alternate those with the acorns and use all 12 of my acorns up. Here's the bead garland. I just love it. Those acorns are absolutely adorable. I decided to use the same yarn and make a tassel. This yarn is really slippery, so I had to use some jute string to do the tying off of the loop at the top. Then I'll trim the bottom loops to make them loose, and then I'll tie it to the end of the bead garland. Since these are all for my tiered tray, no tiered tray would be complete without at least one sign. I'm taking this little crafter's canvas from the Dollar Tree. They come two to a pack. And I'm just gonna paint the canvas portion inside with the chiffon cream, and I'm gonna give it two coats. Using my bare dark antique wax and a small paintbrush, I'm just going to apply the wax to the wood portion of the frame. I'm also going to go around the edges on the canvas just to give it a dimensional look. Using my Craft Smart oil based paint pen in black, and this is the fine tip, I'm going to use somewhat of a script freehand style for the word hello and then underneath that I'm going to put the word fall but just in some simple uppercase letters. I'm also going to give the letters a little bit more dimension by making them a little thicker and thinner in spots just so it looks more professional and high-end. Using some of these burlap oak leaves that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, they're five in a pack. They are wired and they're quite large, but for this little project, I wanna make a little mini leaf. So I'm just going to cut that out of one of the sections and then I'll hot glue it onto the sign. I also have these tiny little pine cones. They're actually not pine cones. They're little seeds or cones from a hemlock tree. I did some foraging at my fall in the spring, found myself a big bucket of these. So you'll be seeing me use these in my fall decor as well as some of my Christmas decor. But I just thought they were perfect to add on to this little sign. Project number three is using this picket fence. I'm just using a portion of it. It was in the miniature section at my Dollarama. I'm also going to be using some of these little hemlock pine cones again, actually not pine cones, but hemlock cones, and I'm going to make a little wreath. Then I'm going to take some of that burlap leaf and cut some little bits to glue inside of the wreath. I'm also going to use some tiny little green sprigs of boxwood just to add a little bit more color. The last project I have for you today for my tiered tray little guys is making a wooden ladder. So I have these two pieces of garden stake that I had trimmed off from a different project and I thought that would be perfect just to have that as the legs of the ladder. And then I'm using these other little pieces of balsa wood and I'm going to trim those down and make the rungs. 
Using hot glue, I'm just going to glue the pieces together. I'm using my stash of acrylic paint in browns and blacks just to give this ladder a first coat of paint and then I'm going to dry brush it. I like using blacks and browns for my base coat because that just makes it look more old and weathered. I'm now going to use some of my country gray chalk paint and just give it some distressing. I want to lighten up that wood a little bit, make it look like it's been outside for a really long time. And I'm also going to add some of the chiffon cream paint as well, just to give it even more texture. I decided that I wanted a little sign on top of the ladder. So I found this little scrap piece of wood. It already has an arrow shape in it and I'm going to paint it with country gray chalk paint. When it was dry, I dry brushed it with some of my black acrylic paint. Sorry, I missed that footage, but you can kind of see the idea. I'm also going to do the same thing with this light beige color. It's kind of a cross between beige and gray, very similar to the Waverly mineral paint. And I'm just going to do some dry brushing with that as well. Taking my Craft Smart paint pen again, I'm just going to write the words pumpkin patch two miles on this little piece of wood. I didn't like the square edge at the end, so I decided just to cut out a small little V and it just gives it a lot more character. The last thing to do for this project is hot glue the little arrow right on top of the ladder. And I'm going to do it on a little kitty wampus there, a little angle, just to make it look a little bit more cutesy. The final project today is making another acorn. I'm using a pine cone and what I decided to do was use the bottom of the pine cone as the top of the acorn. And then I'm taking this jute rope from Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it around gluing as I go and make it the shape of an acorn. This pine cone really didn't like the hot glue. So once I got it established the first couple of rows, I ended up just using my hot glue right on top of the jute rope that was underneath it and that turned out much better. I was able to wrap it a lot faster that way. I then decided that I didn't like some of the gaps that were in the pine cone. This one was kind of open quite a bit so I just took some pieces of a different pine cone and kind of wedged them in with some hot glue just to give it a little bit more fullness. If I were to repeat this project, which I probably will, I'd look for some pine cones that have a more tight bottom that would work better for this project. I am so happy with how all of these turned out. I just love doing little items for tiered trays. I hope you enjoyed my top five fall DIYs. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel grow. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.